with solar panels. Go solar. Our solar energy. So is solar right for you? And these things are absolutely solid. Solar panels are great, but there is a more efficient technology than your average PV cell. And that is this. These are perovskite solar cells, promising to unlock PV cell efficiencies 100 times higher than current commercial cells. But here's the thing, the reason why we don't see them on our houses today is that at worst, they last a couple of days, and at best, about a year. And that's under lab conditions. But that's about to change. Recent breakthroughs in perovskite synthesis increased cell lifetimes by an order of magnitude. And at least one company seems to have cracked the durability problem and will release the first commercially available perovskite solar panel within the year. So what does this mean for you and me? Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is sponsored by EcoFlow. A typical solar panel that you can go out and buy today has a power conversion efficiency of around 20%. That means for every 100 watts of solar energy that hits the panel, only about 20 watts of electricity is actually produced. Those panels are made of silicon, the same semiconductor that we use in computer chips. But a new type of panel with perovskite solar cells is about to hit the market with a 25% efficiency. Now that might not seem like that big of a difference, but that increase in efficiency could slash a solar system like the one I have in my house down from 30,000 to just $20,000. That is a $10,000 difference. For how many of you guys would that amount of money change your decision to either go solar or not? Sound off in the comments below. And by the way, the difference in price is only the tip of the iceberg of what perovskite solar promises, but we'll get back to that here in a minute. First, you're probably wondering, how can such a small change in efficiency make such a big difference in cost? So to figure this out, I asked myself, what would change if I went from 20% efficient panels like the ones I have on my roof to panels that were 25%? I had to install 30 400 watt panels for my 12 kilowatt system. If I had used 25% efficient panels, I would have only needed to install 24 of them for the same size system. But it's not just the reduction in the number of panels. One day, Sky panels will probably even be cheaper than our panels today, but we'll get back to that also in a minute. But by reducing the number of panels you need saves you money in quite a few different ways. For example, the labor cost to install 24 panels is gonna be cheaper than 30. Plus, you need less racking to install them all, and you can potentially put more panels or get more energy out with a limited roof space. We ran into this very problem on our office, which is a one bedroom, one bath, little house and we didn't have all that much room and we maximized as much solar as we could but the truth is we put some panels in a place where there's some tree shading and other things that we could have gotten away from if we had more efficient panels perovskite solar cells are a type of solar technology that use a family of materials called perovskites to convert sunlight into electricity these perovskites are materials that have a similar structure to a mineral made of calcium titanium trioxide and called perovskite in honor of the russian mineralogist who discovered it this mineral forms little cubic crystals that look like this. Any material with this general formula, ABX3, and whose crystal structure looks like this is a perovskite. A, B, and X can be almost anything, so you can tweak those materials by changing the ions in the formula and fine-tuning them for different applications. One of these applications is solar cells, and most of the research in the last 10 years has focused on lead halide perovskites with record-breaking efficiencies. So amazing, perovskite, gonna be great, right? But they're not everywhere yet, like many things we talk about. So why is that? Well, it's kind of simple here. There's a trade-off. The oxygen and moisture in the air, the heat and the sun's UV rays all work together to destroy perovskite cells. And it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Sunlight, the very thing this thing is made to harness is the very thing that destroys it. And to be fair, UV light is destructive to almost anything. I can't go more than about 12 minutes in the sun myself. But anyways, the sunlight can break this down. And sometimes early perovskite cells wouldn't even last more than a couple of days before degrading. Compare that to my silicon panels that I have on my roof right now that will last over 30 years and produce about 80% of their current output 30 years from now. It's pretty amazing. In fact, while recording this video, one of the things I think we have to just take a moment to appreciate is how good solar panels are today. Out in the sun all day and night, no maintenance, no oil changes, no nothing else, just producing electricity. Pretty amazing. I challenge you to name one thing besides your house that can last over 30 years under the sun with minimal to no maintenance. By the way, not even the asphalt shingles on my roof will last as long as my panels will. Now we're all after the next great breakthrough in solar panels or batteries, 
But it's also important to step back and realize how far our current tech has come. I paid about $150 per panel this year for 400 watt panels. It's amazing. And now we're in the golden age of batteries. And our sponsor this week, EcoFlow, and their latest generation Delta Pro 3 might be the perfect representation of just how far batteries have come. Now, this isn't some small battery, but let me show you how capable this thing is. So power tools like that are actually really difficult because they have a huge surge when they first turn on. But like we mentioned, this can now put 8,000 watts for a instantaneous period of time. And that had no problem dealing with that. My favorite new features in the past three months of having this thing are, number one, it's whisper quiet fan design. If you get in about that close, I can hear the quietest fan. They claim 30 decibels. Amazing, this is one of the quietest batteries I've ever seen. Number two, standby time. I did a test, I charged it to 100% and left it unused for 30 days. And I came back and it had 99% capacity. And the battery can output both 120 volt like before, but it can even do 240 volt for larger appliances. And now the Delta Pro 3 has two solar charging ports. A low voltage good for 1000 watts and a high voltage good for 1600 for a total of 2600 watts of solar input. Now this isn't some small battery, but it retains that beautiful design, wheels and handles so you can take it anywhere. And you're gonna want to because it can handle pretty much anything. What makes this battery so versatile is that it has four 20 amp 120 outlets, a 240 outlet, a NEMA L1430, 30 amp outlet, and even direct DC outputs like two 100 watt USB-C charging ports as well. And of course, you can always hook this up to your house like we do. We have a smart home panel too in our office, and this plugs right in to charge and back up your house in the event of a power outage. Now I know going solar and getting batteries can be expensive and complicated, but this is your gateway. This thing can both take in solar input and provide power if the power goes out. Roll this thing in if the power goes out to your fridge and power it for days at a time. So whether you're into camping or the outdoors, you want some emergency backup power in the case of an outage or anything else, check out the Delta Pro 3 from EcoFlow and use our links in the description to save today. Huge thanks to EcoFlow and you. Now back to the show. The point is, we need to fix Perovskite's durability problem. And apparently, that's a tough challenge. Although one company from the UK says they solved it. There are several ways engineers have tried to solve the durability issue. The most straightforward has been to encapsulate the cell to protect it from the environment. But that only solves part of the problem. Another important part of the issue has to do with the internal structure itself and nothing to do with air or sunlight. And you can't fix that by just encapsulating the cell. Two recent discoveries have helped increase cell life by orders of magnitude. The first discovery was made by Yan Yuan Zhou and his team from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and was published in Nature Energy. They looked closely at all the tiny little crystals with an electron microscope and discovered that they had a secret structure no one had ever noticed before. They were covered with little concavities. These were like little indentations that strained the crystal structure, making it unstable. The breakthrough is that they figured out a way to make the perovskite material from scratch without these concavities. All they had to do was add a type of surfacant, something like a detergent whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce. The concavities were gone. The resulting cells lasted 1500 hours under different stress tests compared to only 500 before. But before we get too excited, let's remember that 1500 hours is only about two months under sunlight or around four months of actual field application. So not that great, but it is still a threefold increase and it's not the only breakthrough. The next breakthrough came from the same research team and was also published in Nature. In this case, they looked at the perovskite's internal structure instead of the surface. They found that the little crystals were full of tiny imperfections, which also made them unstable. By shining a violet blue 500 milliwatt laser for five minutes on those parts of the crystal when making the film and during aging, they were able to fix those imperfections and force the ions to form the perovskite structure. The result was that the cells retained almost 100% of their original performance in terms of efficiency after 2000 hours or three months under stimulated daylight conditions. At such low degradation rates, these cells could potentially last five to 10 years before degrading to less than 80% of their original performance. But hear me out. What if we could combine this breakthrough with the earlier one about removing the surface concavities? Could we triple? those five to 10 year claims and finally make perovskite cells that can last as long as traditional panels? 
I actually think it's possible. And so does the company Oxford PV. I get excited when I find breakthroughs like these that make technology advance in huge leaps. But these reports are only in the lab. Scaling from lab to industrial production is the bane of any engineer's existence. And I know <laughs> you feel me on this one. How many times do researchers yell that this will change everything only to not really change anything? I mean, we see it all the time, right? That solid state batteries or some new next generation fusion reactor. That's kind of the hard part about engineering is taking it all the way to the finish line. The spinoff company from Oxford University partnered with Fraunhofer Institute of Solar Energy Systems to make the world's first commercially available perovskite silicon tandem solar panel. And I'll explain what that means here in a minute, but at 25% efficiency, it'll be the most efficient commercially available solar panel in the world. The panel will be 1.68 square meters in size and produce 421 watts. They're also working on a perovskite silicon solar cell in an M6 format with a efficiency of 26.8%, but it's still low volumes and a little early for that. They haven't released full figures on exactly how long these panels would last, but if they're going commercial, I'm guessing it's not gonna be just a couple of months or years. They have to be competitive with current panels. Otherwise it would be a business nightmare for them. Other companies are also working on this technology. Qcells is developing a 26% efficient commercial size module that can last 30 years. Sol Technologies from Poland, Japan, prints perovskites on large sheets of flexible plastic, but none of them are at commercial scale just yet. So if Oxford PV really has solved the durability issue, this could be pretty big. This could be the biggest leap forward in solar energy of the decade because tandem cells have the potential to more than double our current panel efficiencies. In theory, they could go all the way up to 43% with the current world record holder standing currently at 33.9. Now, if you're thinking, how can they manage to break the Shockley Quasar limit of 30% efficiency? They did it by sandwiching two cells together. A neat feature of perovskites is that they are great at absorbing visible light, but they're transparent to infrared light, which silicon cells are great at absorbing. So you can sandwich the two together and get a perovskite silicon tandem cell that absorbs much more light. Some of the other really key benefits, by the way, of perovskites is that they require very cheap and abundant raw materials. They are easily processed and you can make them almost at room temperature by mixing solutions on a substrate level. Silicon cells, in contrast, require high purity silicon that is processed at over a thousand degrees Celsius. And since perovskites are great at absorbing light, you can make them super thin. You can actually make a high performance perovskite cell just 0.15 microns thick. That's a thousand times thinner than a human hair, which by the way, is about how thick silicon cells are. So you can make perovskite cells using less than one one thousandth of the material mass compared to silicon. So all of those benefits are the reason why this technology gets so much attention and research and development, but they're not perfect. Remember from earlier that I mentioned that they're made with lead compounds and lead is toxic and a strong pollutant. There are non-leaded variants, but they're nowhere near as good as the lead halide based cells. So recycling and disposal will be a huge issue for these panels, especially if they don't last as long as silicon panels. Besides the longevity and degradation problem, this is new technology. So there's still many, many more hurdles in terms of manufacturing and scaling production. Another big issue is certification. These cells perform differently from silicon cells and haven't been studied for nearly as long. So we don't have that much information about how they'll perform 20 or 30 years from now. And we definitely do with silicon. And by the way, my first solar panel system on my old house is turning 15 years old pretty soon. And they're still doing great at around 92% of their original output. So we just have more data for traditional panels. If someone walked up to you and said, listen, Here's a solar system for your house that costs half the price, but it lasts 15 years instead of 25. Would you do it? So clearly perovskites just might be good enough to replace solar panels. But to really answer that question, we got to answer the levelized cost of energy or the LCOE. Check this out. So I made this little calculator and we'll put a link to how you can access it and play with the parameters yourself. But as you can see, because the perovskite panels are 25% efficient instead of 20%, we only need 24 panels. And as a rough estimate, 150 is what I paid previously for my last set of solar panels. And if they can get the cost down to 50, which is probably not practical, but if they did, the install cost was the same. And as you can see, 
The perovskite system will cost $21,600, while the traditional panel that I have costs about $30,000. Now that's over $8,000 in savings up front, and that's a big reason why perovskite might have a shot, but there's a lot more to it. If we keep going down the line, you'll see that the panel lifetime is 25 years for my panels. Really, it's probably more than that, but let's just call it 25. And if they can get the perovskite up to 12 years, right? Inflation rate, the annual maintenance is $500. Honestly, I don't pay anything for maintenance, but this is a number that people often use. Um, maybe it's for larger scale plants, but let's just leave it at 500 for the sake of argument. And finally, the price of the energy, which is 35 cents here. Maybe yours is cheaper, you can adjust it. Again, you can make it yourself. And if I hit calculate, you'll see that this is what my system will be producing. I specified a 12 kilowatt system. So this is kind of throughout the year, how much energy will be produced. It looks like we'll make 18.5 megawatt hours a year. And here is the LCOE calculation. So for the traditional system, I've got $47,000 total cost, which is the upfront plus the maintenance over the years. This is how much energy it'll produce. And the LCOE is just 11 cents per kilowatt hour. The Provsky, even with that cheaper upfront price, is still 14 cents. And here's kind of the breakdown as time goes by. By year 12, the Provsky goes away because it's been decommissioned while the main system keeps going. So Provsky still doesn't quite get there. But let's see if we could make Provsky last for 16. Okay, close. So I think 17 would do it. So at 17 years, it would break even. So basically what I'm trying to say is that a perovskite panel would have to last 17 years if a traditional panel lasts 25 for this to actually make sense. Otherwise, you're better off just getting traditional panels. Yes, there's a larger upfront cost, but the LCOE doesn't lie. And that's kind of how it falls. Now, when we talk about the tandem panels, that would be even more expensive. That would be in the realm of maybe double the price of a traditional panel, and that would have an even tougher time unless they last significantly longer. So are we getting closer? Yes, we are. Perovskites are kind of on the horizon, and maybe for special use cases where the materials degrading and having to be replaced isn't as big of a deal as the added efficiency, maybe we'll start seeing that like the next couple of years. And then hopefully they can figure out how to make them last 17 years or longer. And then we're in business. Like I mentioned, tubedavinci.com. You can check out the calculator yourself. For all future videos, we do a lot of calculations. I've never found a way to make this all happen. But now we're going to share them all with you on our website. So come join us, be a member. There's a free tier that gives you access to all of our calculators going forward. And there's a lot more cool stuff that we're going to be sharing on our website. So definitely head over to tubedavinci.com. All right. Thank you so much for watching. And if you thought that was cool, check out this video next.